now which way do we go is the question to ask there are so many choices that it's hard not to look past what is real and what is fake and the risk we have to take will we know what is throwing up our bags trying to find ourselves without that defining words we can no longer hold on to what only makes us hurt we cannot think into the dark the vertigo is getting sharp there's something greater than ourselves and now we must reach for
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our first, I guess, round of Split 2 here in the Western Division. And uh, we've got a, a bit of a rematch from our first split here, Door. We've got SJSU facing off against UC Irvine, and they're starting off this split the same way they did last go-round. Look, if there's any way to start off a split, it's between these two teams. They're kind of like, they're, right, there's people floating around that first position. It's the West Division, let's be real. Any of these teams are just indomitable compared to it to a lot of the other yeah. stuff we see in the collegiate scene in general. But they're not strangers to one another. It's not just CF1 these teams play in. They're meeting in all sorts of other places. And one of the biggest rivalries that we see constantly, SJSU up against UC Irvine. It's the slow, methodical style of UC Irvine up against just the always aggressive, always pushing, always taking map control style of SJSU. And it really makes for an interesting clash every single time. I agree. I mean, last time these two faced off, SJU was able to, to squeak out the victory and, and you got to cast that match with the wonderful Pulsable. And scoreline, like we talked about a little bit before coming onto the broadcast, not necessarily an accurate depiction of how close that match really was. And, and that was round one of split one. So these teams have had a lot of time to kind of grow, some input strategies, work out those synergies, and then become, you know, completely different animals. And that's what it's going to take here in Split 2, because only four teams are going to be advancing on to the regional playoffs at the end of the split. Yeah, I mean, you take a look at the previous split, right? It was SJSU going 8-1. and one. That one, technically just a forfeit, but it did stop the perfect stage from happening. u 3 Irvine with a nice little 7-2 and two going on for themselves. And there's a lot of really deadly teams floating around here. I remember, uh, excuse me, Cal Poly Pomona B was a team that nobody saw coming. And then I think they beat, uh, oh God, they beat WGA, Cal Golden Bears, and UC Irvine. I think back to back to yeah. back. I could be wrong about that. And they just started like sweeping people out of nowhere. And so there's some really deadly, just dark horses in here. So between UC Irvine and SJS Drew, yes, they're, they're kind of two of the clear front runners for this bracket, but a win's a win to them. They want every single point they can get because there's a chance for upset in every single one of these matches, which takes us to our next point of the map pick ban, where you say yeah, Irvine got the first map pick and boy, oh boy, did we get an interesting one. And I just, want to extend my thanks to the players for choosing Icebox. Uh, I have been arguing since the beginning of Split 1. Pick Icebox, please. It's such a fun map to watch plays. Uh, we, we talked a little bit to one of our observers um, before we came on about how Icebox just has all of these little nooks and crannies and small spots to, to make really impactful plays through that are sometimes pretty unexpected. So you, you really have to be prepared when coming to Icebox. And for a team like SJSU, who is a big fan of quick, harsh executes, this could be a little Choose bit of a kink in the agent. works because Icebox is a map where taking it slow tends to give you a little bit of the upper hand because information is vital here. Yeah, there's one thing to keep an eye on, though. It's right on their defensive side. Yeah, there's not executes, but SJSU, with their aggression, Icebox is a huge map. They take a lot of space. The second they find a hole in your composition, a hole in your map control, they're scooting a player in there. They're getting in aggressively, which leads us over to the team compositions, which are fairly, I would say, indicative of what these teams want to be doing. UCI, both teams locking in a Viper, kind of no surprises there. Stages for both sides as well, just gives you intense amounts of kitchen control. The big change up here is kind of the Killjoy up against the Sova. I'm a bit more of a fan of uh, the Killjoy in this particular situation. I think the, the utility setups on both sites are, are fairly powerful in comparison to the Sova, which can get some information, but th remember the larger a map is, the more difficult it can be for Sova to find the exact spot to put that dart. So on a map, the scale of Icebox, that can become a little bit of a problem. Yeah, not to mention all the corners and cuts and different levels that are involved here. But speaking of those corners and cuts, the Jets, when it comes to Icebox, I feel like Jet has a really, really fun time. It's it's kind of the verticality playground of Valorant, in my opinion. So if you're a fan of getting up on top, getting up into the face of your opponent, this is definitely a map to choose. I mean, you're keeping an eye on Silver High Flying players. Don't don't doubt Bear just yet. Kind of the resident Rage player here at CF1. Bear is going to be a bit of a monster coming off these high grounds with the blast packs. I'm expecting the entry fragging to be pretty much equal in that regard from both sides. Oh no, Teddy down early to Platinum as well in mid. There's a lot of map control lost here. The defenders, but they've reacted appropriately. The Sage from mid could be a bit of a problem coming up behind Platinum, but no, Platinum's got the flick, but not in time to stop the Ruma from getting the frag. 
Yeah, just a little bit too much on the plate there. Couldn't exactly finish it all. I think it taken out pretty quickly. And UCI on the plant. Man, advantage. Pissed around. Really big task ahead of Choya Boy. But of the members of SJASU that I expect to clutch out moments like this, Choya Boy is definitely among that list. But I guess I'll go ahead and grab an eraser. Uh, let's <laughs> take that spot, I guess. So SJSU, it's the first pistol round. You're not too hurt about that. But UCI, however, you're feeling pretty confident taking that round off early. Yeah, they're playing quick and hard, and I think that's what you kind of expect to do when you've got a Viper. Maintaining map control behind you is a bit of a difficult proposition, right? Your Killjoy can throw out the chicken and can do that. But the second that that Sova uses utility to find out where you are, you can't, you're spreading yourself too thin on the attacking side unless you're trying to play a default and hold everything down. So I think you see I have a fairly strong understanding of if we're going to play the map slow, we need to play it slow. And if we're going to play the map fast, we need to play fast. There's not too many in-between paces that this composition can hit. And as you see, quick pace onto the B site here. And almost like a bait and switch, SJSU checked the corner by attacking spawn to make sure that nobody's there and rush their team in, in case there is some sort of push. But you see guy just walks like two ships passing in the night through mid onto point. And right now, SJSU got to be shaking their heads a little bit, need a splash of cold water as UCI is showing them a completely different side of their squad. And this is a match that has traditionally gone early the way of SJSU. I mean, it shows both in the score lines, but also kind of just in the confidence of the players. I think UCI, this isn't necessarily a uh, a strat that they're running every time. This is something that they say, okay, oh we're going God. up against SJSU. This match goes a specific way most times. Well, you know what we're going to try and do? We're going to try and take this one by the horns early, put some early rounds up on the board with some very aggressive plays off the back of our Viper, and try and force them to play at our pace, which I think is a fantastic idea. And it's already proven itself to be not only useful, but SJSU just not really ready for it. A team that consistently is able to control the pace of their engagements in the games that they've played throughout the first split. So to be able to kind of knock them on their heels a little bit is a good omen for UCI and things to come as we get into the final gun round. Self, I mean, pushing very aggressively. And they've got all the Viper Util to stop the push coming up from behind as well. This is huge. Oh my god, what a... Look at this! Yeah, this is just dominance in show. UCI right now wanting to let SJSU know who's boss here on Icebox. They get to find a pick over on A. The defensive side of things to even it down. Now 3v3. Bomb's still looking to go A, though. And we do have to keep in mind, right? While we do have some of the most custom strats that we've seen in a long time coming out from UCI right now. SJSU is not short in the, in the way of good mid-round calls. They know how to adapt. They know how to play the situations. They know they have UCI locked down to the center of the map right now, and it's going to be incredibly difficult for UCI to regain any of that space back because now that they've opened up their own half of the map, they have no clue where these SJSU Get players are. Way. Wow, Sylph, a little bit of paranoia. Going to go ahead and pop the knives with the, the plant is mid. down. Sorry, the spike. Enemy Information's there. The kill comes through to twofer. That's only one member left. left for UCI with the bomb. Try and go for the rotation on to B. SJSU does still have a member, but... Oh, no. This Late is fine for SJSU. They, 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 they want to just... No, it's fine. They, they don't... They'd rather that rotation happen that way. Uh, they want to get these two players together so they can just play a double angle. It's tough, you know, allowing the spike to go down, but in situations like this... You're more than okay with it, because now you see the Jet, the Rays taking this two-on-one, waiting for their abilities. They should have a couple. Yep, two Cloud Bursts up for the Jet in Updraft as well. The Rays might have something online. They've got a lot of tools to try and deal with this one player, but it's a pretty good position here for Nacho. Here's the Updraft, so until they're on the point there, there goes the knock, and a double peek's going to make it easy. SJSU will get the Diffuse and put themselves a point on the board. And thankfully, their economy not going to be thrown into the dirt just yet. Yeah, as impressive of a start to that round as we got out of UCI with one of the craziest walls I've seen in a hot minute. SJSU reacted perfectly. They just left. They said, yeah, you can have the middle of the map. Fine. That's, that's okay by us. You Sit on your wall all you want. They got one player for it, which, you know, is notable and good. But the second you lose momentum with a push like that, you lose all the map control because you're throwing everything at this push. 
So SJSU, smart team, know how to deal with it, and I expect them to be able to adapt to this quick play style even more as we go on. You can see there's a bit of a shift in how the defenders are playing this one, the Silva, probably playing a little bit more passive towards that mid area, knowing that that aggression is fairly common for them. There it is, early drone out mid to find them. Viper goes down on the opposing side. The Ray's gonna struggle to deal with this push for the time being, though, as it should be a pretty quick slant on site. Ooh, might be struggling with the push a little bit, but the wall there actually gonna act as a helper, so. Free pick off of the headshot, drops below the wall, and they're gonna be there for the res. So back to five man squad for UCI. Can dwindle that down, Choi Boy. Couple shots from behind, has to expend the healing onto themselves. UCI still able to retain control over the majority of the point. The dash onto the top of the crate isn't gonna stay alive for too long, but Fig looking to squeak something out. Isn't able to do so, and UCI with three members up is still gonna be able to take the round. Yeah, and I appreciate their willingness to use ultimates in a round like that as well, right? You're coming in using Viper's Pit, Rez as well. They know they're going to get those back. What they need to do is just keep this pace up. They know they've got a strong early lead on SJSU, and Icebox is a map that we can see snowball fairly heavily. You take a look at the credits right now, and it's not very good for SJSU. A bit all over the place, if you ask me. I mean, take a look. 3k credits on one player, and that's with heavy armor, a sheriff on another, 1.9k on other players. Like... It really is a little bit of a mess on the defensive side economically. And you see, I know this. They're taking advantage of this. You see light buys on some of these players. A stinger up for Nacho, even. They're making the most of this economic advantage, and they're going to continue to do so. Oh, and Silk is going to punish Thig for being a little bit aggressive. And then Nacho is going to take the aggressive card and play it themselves. DCI now up to 5v3 as SJSU needs to decide what they can get out of this. Please land. Oh, no. Almost lands the shot they need. Teddy. Barely missing out on that opportunity to take UCI down one more member. They're gonna hold this angle strong. For SJU, this is really just an exit frag situation. 2v4. Not very well equipped as far as the armory goes. Nah, uh, they're looking for whatever they can get right about now. That Sheriff is a little bit deadly. Bear is not in any real position to get a frag until they get a Vandal up in their hands. Looking for one around the corner, but no. Nah, Stinger still fairly strong at those closer ranges. And now UCI continue to build that economy, continue to build up the advantage. For SJSU, this is the round they're looking to come back. They're going to take that heavy credit lean on the jet. They're going to turn it into an operator. And this is the turning point round for SJSU. This is the round where they're saying, okay, we're going to throw some new stuff at you. We're going to see how that goes. You see the Viper now shifting over towards the A side of the map, whereas the Sage playing over towards B. Jet wanting to play in towards Kitchen to stop any quick pushes through there. It's likely we see that Jet rotate. Uh, more heavily towards the B or mid side of the map as the later the round goes. But I appreciate that SJSU know where their turning point is. They know they need to win this round. Oh, they're going to learn exactly where Fig is. There at the very beginning. The op looking to find a second shot. Down to five health. Able to dash out just in time. Back to the second beat. Use the, the boomstick there to find themselves another quick kill from there. SJSU doing a good job of dwindling down the resources of UCI as they take back to the point. The retake. Oh, but they're still not great. And keep an eye on this raise. Managed to sneak all the way into the back of spawn. SJSU, no, but that doesn't make the angle any easier to deal with. Oh, unfortunate timing, though. Nacy pops up the wall just to make that angle even easier to deal with Bear. Back through sprays, but it's a double angle they're walking into. UCI, despite SJSU's best efforts, the operator kill early on in the round are still using this Viper to excellent effect to create some really, really deadly executes. And I'm going to be honest, I think that's the first time that we've seen Nacy even pop a wall up the entire game. Nacy's often been the first one down, not able to use the utility for the retake. So I feel like there is a bit of a difference in maybe understanding of how the Vipers are used, or maybe would you see SJSU more comfortable with it on the attacking side? And now, uh, speaking of comfort, we're going to see SJU in a bit of an uncomfortable position. Full gun by for UCI. SJU, I believe they have that one d judge. The rest of their members still rocking pistols due to the economy hit after that last round. So it's going to be up to some early picks to come through and hopefully a weapon grab here or there. If I'm SJSU, I'm rotating hard early right about now. You're at a weapons disadvantage. You have to be a gambling man if you want to win this round. But even so, despite the numbers, you're getting picked away at range by the better buy of UCI. I'm loving the strategy of using the Sage Wall as well as the Viper Wall. Not only mitigate what can be pushed, but what can be seen completely from anybody. SJSU able to find- No, no, don't tie to the chicken! Low on health. Oh. 
<laughs> oh. We're gonna find a clean 3k there at the end, and SJSU still struggling to put things up defensively, just haven't really been able to get these retakes. UCI doing a really good job of not only maintaining presence after the post, but being able to threaten any kind of retake. Yeah, these executes, I, it feels like they're airtight for the most part. SJSU trying to push back in, it, they're using their Viper stuff relatively early in the round. You can see they've already got the wall set up to go across the middle of the map to stop that A split that they've been going for fairly often. But that means you don't have it for later in the round. This Viper lacks any ability to be reactive to the plays and in, in the fact that they're trying to set up for these plays early round and that, you just get 50-50s fairly often. Think we're going for an aggressive angle. It feels like they're throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I'll be honest, not much of it is. And at all, that's not the first time that we've seen Fig take that aggressive angle and get punished for it. Should run. And with the man down, UCI feels pretty comfortable about taking this point. They've got the Killjoy ultimate up, so I'm gonna force every member of SCU out. And Nazi turns to run away and gets caught by an aggressive peek from UCI. Nacho gonna be able to collect that pick. That he's not gonna find much with that ultimate, and that's gonna put Shoy Boy in an awkward situation where they're gonna force the res, put it into a 3v4 free take. They do have a Viper's Pit to try and retake this. Whether or not they do is kind of the, the big question here. I don't think it's likely. There it is, though. They're popping it, going for the 3v4. Spray at the spike is dangerous, but with June at 13 HP, this could end at any point in time. Spike placed up high, though, means it's not covered by the Viper's Pit. Oh, no. SJSU didn't catch track of it early enough, and now time just says that Nacy doesn't stand a chance at going for this. I mean, even in a late double peek by UCI is going to make sure they don't get out with anybody alive. And this is a difficult part, a difficult play style for SJSU to kind of decode. UCI has done a pretty effective job of let's get to A as quickly as possible, let's get to mid as quickly as possible, let's get to B as quickly as possible. They've also run it, run it around you a couple of times when it comes to playing a delayed push to A or looping through mid to B. So <laughs> you can't really confidently say, all right, well, they're, they're a little bit more comfortable here on B than they are on A, because even though they may have planted, three times in a row on B. That's a perfectly well position plant on A. And there's just no fear from this UCI side. Even pushing into the Viper utility, which is going to drop all your armor off you pretty much instantly, they're still going for these pushes. And I think the beautiful part about this is it is distinctly counter-stratting for SJSU. They are planning for this match because SJSU is normally the team that's doing this. SJSU is usually oh. the team taking all the aggressive angles, taking all the aggressive pushes, even on their defensive side. They're the ones pushing. UCI is giving them no time to do that. Yeah, the biggest difference that I'm seeing right now from their match here and their match in split one is exactly that. UCI took a long time to begin to react to what San Jose State was bringing to the table. And, and now they're not reacting, playing proactively. And and preemptively getting into these angles, making sure that smokes are out. The, the recon dart out the gate from Teddy has been denied almost every single round by UCI. And in fashions to where it's not even giving away information. They'll, they'll be pushing A and they still destroy the dart that goes to the back of, of their side on B just to make sure that SJSU can't sit pretty and can't be comfortable. Yeah, it's hard to explain just how out of the norm this is for these two teams as well. SJSU is normally the one who has control of this match. If anybody, oh, no. oh my god, Thigward but <laughs> slips off the box, gets one for his troubles, but it's not really worth it for the whole operator. 4v4 now for the retake. Make that 4v3, though, as Choi Boy's forced back into the corner, takes a late peek onto the jet, turns it into two. This is a good chance for SJSU to put their second up on the board. Choi Boy, one of the players for SJSU that you really expect to see at the top of the leaderboard. Going off those skills right then and there, and uh, earlier we saw why the map is called Icebox. Teddy gonna use that Owl Drone to figure out a little bit of information for San Jose State. Both members, UC Irvine, have now been outed. Where their positioning is, Platinum able to find the kill through the smoke onto the spike, and now it's down to a 2v1 Choi Boy. Has to be able to find the Viper. I'm not oh, on 60 their HP. Side. There's not enough. There's not enough time. Oh, the ring, ring around the, the rosy world champion platinum. Give him the gold medal already. Oh my god, he hasn't even been seen. Joy Boy gets a 4k, but you can put it up on your mother's fridge. You can't take it to the bank. Yeah, looks good in the highlight reel as long as you don't include those last couple of seconds. And, and UCI doing a good job of using literally everything at their disposal. They've used the fact that they can win the gunfights and now. You know, playing a bit of the mental game, the strategic side of of uh, Valorant, using that sixth man 
if you will, that timer on the bomb. Yeah, and honestly, for SJSU, now that we're at a point where they're on a safe buy so that they can full buy up for, for the remaining rounds of the half, I would love to see a stack out of them. We see them run their strats. They're, they're very headstrong in that saying, you know, we can do this. And they're a team that we know is very mentally strong. They can get through a lot of stuff, but despite all that, they still didn't push through. I think a gamble round could really do a lot for their mental just to put one up on the board or take a shot at a 5v5 retake. Oh, we haven't San seen this Jose. rotate out of him yet. Yeah, I was about to say, San Jose pretty confident that the, the play is coming through here on to B, but UCI once again throwing another element into the mix with Fake. Gonna slowly rotate, but allow one of their players to get caught out in the middle there. Fair. Find Platinum as well. So now SJSU. A three man squad against a four man UCI as the plant goes through and the rotation's been called. Onto the high ground once again. Only ultimate on board right now is the showstopper for SJSU. Oh, They're so smooth getting into these post play positions as well. This is going to be really hard to deal with. Oh, Thig was so ready for that nibbler. Takes the aggressive peek, gets punished. There's another one for Thig. A few more members of UCI protect the bomb, but only the solo. SJSU player, there to get the defuse. Neuro net bringing Fig down to seven. Takes out the turret as well, looking to find the last one, but still, keeping the tracking on track, finds a shot on the Fig. Yeah, SJSU are getting thrown for a loop right now. That's the first heavy rotate that we've actually seen out of UCI in 11 rounds, which is crazy to say, because their team that we know can be fairly dynamic, they just haven't had any real need to be. They haven't gotten shut out, and they're like, oh, they're 11 rounds into the half, they're like, I guess we should rotate here. They didn't have to. They probably could have gotten sight control if they really wanted it, but they said, oh, you know what? We've still got an Azor sleeve. We still get to rotate back one time. Now we'll throw it into a rifle round where I, I would suspect UCI still has something up their sleeve for a round like this. SJSU finally changing things up. Keep an eye on the Rays and the Sage here. Maybe pushing out of this B side the second that they don't see pressure. Oh, here's the... the yep, this is the change up from UCI. They're playing slow now. But if information does get caught out there by the recon dart, but oh no, there goes the showstopper on the top and it finds Sylph just enough to get themselves the kill there. We're gonna find a second, but gets taken out by June, not too into the back. Oh, this is the a I bad position. So deep. They hear the drop. The Sage heard. There it is. Yep, Sage checking behind. Oh, that's so critical that they gave him that little sound cue. Choi Boy now knows, but do they get the frag? It's a question. I'm not sure that Choi Boy is actually completely confident that there is somebody behind them. We tend to they find the opening, kick it now. Attention put towards attacking Spawn. Choi Boy making sure that nobody's there to find that cheeky angle through the wall. Does in fact know that Nacho's in the position, gives that information to Nasi. Nasi able to capitalize on it. Now you see I in danger of losing the point down to a 2v2. We've seen these before. Platinum still alive. Platinum getting taken down. Right as I say it, I'm sorry for caster cursing it for you. But it's all up to June now. Face off against Toy Boy. Toy Boy finds it. Needs the defuse for the last final seconds, but will be able to do so. And SJSU before the halftime, able to put at least two on the board. But you need an impressive attack here. I mean, call it, you know, call it. Not that much for it being 2-10, but I do have to give props over there to SJSU. They played reactively. They knew what they needed to do to win that round. That one sound cue actually pretty much determined the entire thing. The fact that the Sage was there and ready to hear that drop was unfortunate for UCI to say the least, but I don't think they're, uh, they're complaining too much with 10 rounds up on the board coming out of an attacking Icebox half. They've only got to eke out three more to win this one. And I'm curious to see whether or not uh, they, they go for any aggressive plays because they've got a few rounds to gamble with. There's a, there's a shot we just see a couple stacks out of them and they just take the 50-50s. Yeah, I, I would not at all be surprised to see UCI do that. However, on their defense, they do like to play a little bit more on the catching end of things. So I don't I don't I also wouldn't be surprised to see them play extremely slow and give SJSU nothing as far as defaults go. And just kind of gather that information so that they're comfortable to win the three rounds they need. Yeah, they're, they're already gambling in the pistol round. I mean, you take a look, it's a four-man lean towards the A site with just the Viper sitting around here in B-Long. And that Viper is completely surrounded by attacking players. Probably not long for life, but if Platinum can trade themselves out for one, it's a pretty good position. Nobody's looking up! Platinum able to find oh! both kills! 
and UCI put themselves into a glorious position up against the single Choi Boy here on the stage. Nacho's gonna find it. What a beautiful play there. SJSU, just, uh, you know, you're always told to check your corners, but don't forget to check your legends. <laughs> you know, it's such a quick round, but honestly, Platinum's position was pretty critical there, right? It denies the split from coming through, should it ever happen to come to that. And then the rest of UCI can worry about catching the players off and rotate. Because keep an eye on the kill feed, right? Nibbler's getting frags this entire time. And where's Nibbler getting frags? Entering onto B for the retake. So that means the rotation was quick enough. They know how to play that four-man lean. And it looks really good. Now you only have to put two more rounds up on the board. And that makes it even more likely that they're just happy to gamble these rounds. When they've got a weapon advantage like they do right now, though... I don't think they feel the need to to do that. They're more than happy to just play a standard 2-1-2 through the rest of the map, though. With all the pressure coming over, it's quick rotate for UCI. The question is, are the shots there? Oh, man, throwing out the boom bot just in the nick of time. The wall goes up, barely able to get save some space. Still able to find a kill into the back, but gets taken down themselves in a trade for Nacho. Now down to a 2v3 SJSU, down one man. Bomb has already, the spike has already been planted. Been playing extremely quietly around this corner, allowing for Nibbler to get into position to push a little bit harder. One enemy he can, no, Choi Boy was watching the wrong angle. Bear is going to go down as well, and UCI. 12 rounds on the board. SJSU, bit of a shell shocked team right now. You know, all things considered, for SJSU, it's not an awful round, right? They still are at an economic disadvantage. They didn't have much in the way of weaponry heading into that round. They committed very little to it, knowing that this was going to be their shot. They're happy to take this one into overtime, which is a crazy proposition. But should it get there, SJSU are choosing to opt for overtime versus some, some forced by gambles early on. And UCI, again, are just going to be able to gamble this one away, throw a Killjoy down in mid, get some little information, and then a rotate off the back of that. This Sage and Viper are going to be fairly mobile for the most part, and they've got a Viper wall that's probably going to be tossed up here, denying much pressure from ever coming out towards the B side. Yep, there it is. Sage is never going to see that, so the default already kind of hindered a good bit for SJSU. They do have a some A control, but UCI can rotate. They should be able to deal with this fairly well. Oh, and SJSU already on point and asserting, asserting control. There finds the opening pick and through cheeky gap in the Venom wall. Nash is going to get found out by Nasi. SJSU trying to stabilize UCI down two members now as they trade out. Spike planted. He's back on track now down to two. SJSU looking good to take the round and push this on. But they lose members in the process. Platinum trying to reposition. Preparing for the retake with Self. Oh boy, it's all about the timing, and it's perfect! Oh no, the Spectre just legs the push coming in from UCI. The mission pick up a Vandal, but it's going to take a miracle out of Platinum to make this one work. And I'm sorry, miracles only happen in movies to score maybe 12-13, but SJSU are not done with this game yet. They've got a long, long road ahead of them, but you know what? This is a game of momentum. They're able to put the economy of UCI into the gutter, if you will, when, you know... This round and the next, you put yourself into a position where suddenly putting this game back into overtime becomes something that's a little bit more possible. Plus, on a map like Icebox, which in my opinion, a little bit more attacker favored. It's early pressure in towards the B side. They're trying to do the same thing that UCI did to them earlier, but Platinum is a pretty nice setup to deny that from ever happening. Sprays down the bot, but can't get Thigwerb who's quick on the entry. Nibbler, are you sure you want to push this? Be careful. And the wall stops from doing even that. Decides not to use the wall of their own, probably for the better. As the rest of the teammates have grouped up, a couple of shots could change the pace of this round, but they're not landing much of anything. <laughs> you see I have any contained with rifles at a distance, and that's difficult while some of them rocking just shotguns, but Nibbler! Not going to be handicapped by that specific situation. Ooh. Able to find two, and now it's a 2v1, and it was oh so real right there. But Teddy going to put an end to those dreams and keep SJSU in the fight. They're sweating a little bit. UCI are going to be coming into this round with a full buy as well, alongside their Sage, having plenty of utility. SJSU just starting to build up that economy. They understand this, right? That's one of the most important things to get about SJSU, right? They're mental, strong. Their ability to call the game, just as strong. So when you put those two together, you put up a team that says, okay, we're happy to lose this second round. We understand that puts us at match point, but we understand how important it is to build an economy if we want to build a comeback. They go, take away the third round, take away the fourth. This is where it starts. If they can win this round, they have a almost indomitable 
economy of their own to deal with, but it is a long way away. Still 1.30 on the clock to get through here, and Self's making it look a little bit easier. Besides, if you're going to use cheeky spots in that Viper Wall, then you know what? I'm going to use cheeky spots in this Viper Wall. Tries to get a bit of an acrobatic kill there in the end, isn't he? But to secure it, both teams now down to four players. Choi Boy, the wall for denial, but it's quickly taken down. And oh, Platinum and June spraying through the wall to find both kills and putting UCI back up on top. Teddy. Trying a little bit of vengeance. Choi Boy's nose. Three takes coming onto the point. And now the final member of SJU alive, but not able to clutch it out. Map's gonna go to UCI. And you know, I think I speak for both of us when I say that match went a lot quicker than we thought it was going to. I will say it's nice we do have Haven up on the board for our next map, which is traditionally been one of SJSU's really quality maps. But after a game like that out of UCI, out of all the counter striding we saw, out of all of the really heavily aggressive play that we saw out of them, stuff that just changes how this matchup plays, because these teams have played probably dozens of times against one another throughout various leagues and, and kind of tournaments. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've ever seen it play out in this direction with UCI taking such a strong grip of the tempo early on. And it's refreshing. It's not only refreshing, it's required. I mean, you're in the, you're in the Western division where, as we've talked, it's a stacked division. Every single team that is currently here it has, has what they need uh, to come out of this split alive. And, and for UC, UC Irvine, Coming up against a team like San Jose State University in split two, you can't show any weakness. You have to come out of the gate as strong as you can and keep that momentum throughout the entire split because you don't get another chance after split two. We go into regional playoffs to follow this, so there are no second chances. You can't be giving anybody any sort of purchase. There's no more wiggle room, if you will. So for, for UC Irvine, this is exactly the kind of play that I, that I wanted to see, and I'm happy to see them switching it up completely on San Jose State. Yeah, well, we saw the pocket pick Icebox come out. They had some crazy strats lined up there. Do they have another ace up their sleeve when we take things to Haven in just a bit? We'll find out, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned, because we're coming back with more Valor in action.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to CF1, Steidl24, and Door. Oh, yes, I got the right way. Wow, I'm so proud of you pointing the right way first time. To oh. no lie, I usually have tape somewhere on my wall. Like, Oh, just to know? <laughs> yeah, just just know. Didn't do it this time. Just went on my instinct, but it worked out. Um, speaking of instinct, we were talking a little bit about these two teams and coming into our next map, which is going to be Haven. Um, off the back of what was a pretty stellar first map from UCI, however, it feels you know, like they an understatement. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's it's they're, they're proving my point. They picked Icebox. They had clear cut, defined executes, and you know their defense was you know very very well planned out to the point where SJSU never really got to get a grip on what was really happening. However, Haven is a map that traditionally San Jose State has done very good on. And they're starting on the defense. As we pointed out most of San Jose State's stronger plays have been when they've started with defense. Yeah, it's their favorite side of their favorite map, right? They're heading into this with all the comfortability they could want, but you have to look at the other side as well. Irvine wanted attack, right? They had side choice, and it's pretty clear why they wanted attack after watching that last map over on Icebox. And I suspect they're going to be going for a lot of the same strategies. As we head into this, they're going to try and keep that pace high, try and play faster than what we'll see out of SJSU. And the question is, that legendary SJSU Haven defense that we see constantly, is that enough? Is that going to be enough to stop what seems like an indomitable UCI? Right now, SJSU locking in comfort picks. Thigwerb going on the signature Phoenix. Teddy, signature Silva. Choi Boy, signature <laughs> over on to the Cypher. Nacy is just comfortable as they can be on this omen bear on jet like this is a team that wants to rely on their instinct to win this game and i think that's the right thing right uci is coming with counter strats you have to be able to adapt on the fly you're never going to be able to do that better than when you're on the agents that you're most comfortable with uci on the other side a very what i'll call modern roster they're locking in right now with platinum up on the astra run to alongside sylph on an omen so kind of a double smoke setup that they've got going here. I'm curious to see whether or not they use that Astra in a little bit more aggressive of a fashion and try and utilize a few more of those stuns and gravity wells more so than the smoke since they have the omen. And we talk a lot about map control when players are pushing, you know, deep through flanks and things like that. But one thing that we don't talk a lot about is information control. And that's exactly what the composition of UCI is looking to do. You know, you have Cypher as well as the Sova. So as far as information that you can gather practically for free, you're going to get a lot. The Astra, beautiful at denying information and denying com and then completely shutting off areas of the map because of that. And then you also have the Omen and you got your smoke. So right now, UCI really looking to control the pace that SJSU is allowed to play at. I think that's a pretty good shot, right? It's not Icebox where the counter strats are, are fairly obvious, and, or not obvious, but, you know, apparently to UCI they are. Here, you have to be a little bit more tame, especially against SJSU. They're going for, for what is feeling like a pretty classic play out of them and a quick early mid push. UCI don't seem to be the wiser, though, quite yet, as two players have already snuck up in here. Oh, they're going to be pretty aware of that pretty soon. Bear, able to find an opening pick and dash out to save their life, contesting self. Deciding to take it back <clears throat> just a little bit. Not quick enough, however. Platinum able to find it, but dang, at the hot hands down. 
10 health left. Not going to be able to use that to heal themselves up. So going to be relying on the rest of the members of SJSU. Very through on this first round. Yeah, this really feels like SJSU trying to get an early grip on the game. Trying to not let UCI run away with the pace. But it may be to their detriment. UCI's composition sees teams custom made to try and stop aggression like this. Question is, is it going to work out for him? Nibbler's pushing up early here. Both players coming around. The Phoenix will make it to the flank, but the question is, can Teddy trade himself out for one? The answer is no. Turns it into a 2v1 now for UCI with just a sliver of HP as well on this remaining Phoenix. Still good for one, though. Oh, and that's the kill that they needed. The Hot Hand's now on deck. They can heal themselves up. The information's gone out that they're hurt, but Nacho able to find that 1v1 thing. I have to go back to spawn for the next round as UCI once again starts it off with a winning round. And that's scary. This is a this is a half that I think is maybe the most impactful that we'll see in the entirety of, of split number two here for CF1, right? The second half of the game, I'm sure, is going to matter in who can seal it out, etc. Maybe we get a game that goes long. But for both of these teams, this is their strong side of the map. And UCI just found a massive economic advantage. And they're going to try and push it for everything it's worth. Take a look at SJSU lined up outside mid. This is them trying to create some sort of difference early on in the game. They want to push these angles and see if they can find something, but I'm sorry, you're going to be knocking at a door with nobody home. Oh man, and Nibbler's late arrow is going to get the information. Oh, barely not going to think, just squeaking back into that omen smoke. Stay away from that recon dart. So UCI not going to grab any information from the rotations, but SJSU silently waiting in the wings. This utility to get spent. All these smokes. Remember, these post play positions can be held for a long time. The Astra can continue to smoke this up. The Omen should get at least one more smoke up right by the end of this round. This is far from over. The Silva also has Hunter's Fury. This is 5v4, but it really is significantly better for UCI. Not to mention the fact that they're the only ones holding actual weapons. Yeah, and, and, you, and sorry, San Jose State loves to play this map for the retake because of how strong they are at it. It's difficult to do that when you have no information. Now there's a couple of casual trades going on to the point as a hosh posh maj magosh of players from San Jose State run in as best they can. The UCI with three members still alive gonna be able to take the round and put themselves economically at a advantage going into the gun round. Yeah, it feels like, like you were talking about, economically, not just at an advantage, but they're taking every little economic win that they can get. SJSU missed a, a minor break point, I, I would call it, and not managing to kill three people in that round. Killing two is nice, but killing three makes it so that others can't buy one another. It makes it so that this is no longer a bonus round for the attacking side, or at least that bonus round is really just not very threatening. But since they didn't manage to do that, UCI gets to turn this into something relatively threatening. SJSU aren't turning off the brakes, though. This Phoenix pushing up mid gets a little bit of information. They'll back off the C site, waiting to just play that retake game you were talking about earlier. Oh, that Hunt and Fury going to be doing a lot as far as space being made, and Nacho using utility of their own. To find themselves a free kill there off of the boom bot, holds the corner, finds the kill on the thing as well, pushes aggressively, able to find one for the swap of the weapon, but takes their own life in the process, and Nasi not able to clutch things out as UCI continues to lead the charge and take rounds. And they win the bonus round. Like that wasn't even a particularly strong bonus round. They had a couple of sheriffs, some light armor mixed in there. They pick up all the weapons that SJSU just dropped. All of that full by, like this is economically a disaster for SJSU. And yeah. had that first round gone a little bit differently, right? We saw Nacho sitting at 18 HP at the end of that. We could be looking at an entirely different game right now. But once UCI have gotten a lead tonight, it feels like they just know exactly how to run with it, man. Now with upgraded weapons, they're coming into what's almost definitely going to be a fourth round up on the board for them. SJSU, I'm looking at them next round to be the real difference makers, but even then it feels a little bit difficult. And uh, SJSU, they chose the right site to stack, but sadly ill-equipped. Fight wasn't going to go on their side, and only the two remaining members off-site are going to be left, and... With just Choi Boy up, and I believe all he's got is that frenzy. Uh, if Choi Boy takes this, I will get their name tattooed on me. All right, confident, happy that Choi Boy didn't get Woo! it. That would not have fit <laughs> my current array of tattoos. That you know, that's the same player that you put at your top of the list to uh to clutch out for SJSU earlier, and then promptly this erased just, it. So this is true. I, I don't know how well I can trust your word. <laughs>
But like I was talking about, SJSU, this is the turning point round. Bear buys up an operator. They want to start playing around a little bit more here. Give UCI a gut check. The jet going out towards the C side of the map. The question is, do they come across anybody? Does this operator find value early on? Even on Icebox, it did. They got an early pick with it when they did manage to buy it up, but it didn't really result into anything, which is kind of the real shame about it. But on their signature map, I trust that SJSU can figure out exactly how they want to use this. Only issue is there's so much information being denied to SJSU from UCI. Astra sitting in wait, patiently controlling the area, or... It's the smokes. Yeah, from the omen. <clears throat> SGSU still having a pretty solid hold on B. On the meantime, UCI slowly takes control of C. And you have to not just is... find purchase here. But to find one kill there in the garage with Choi Boy quickly trading out. Ghost Boy, bye bye. This is kind of the, the dream retake situation for SJSU. They go to the long range site when they had the operator in their hands. Going to be a bit of a problem trying to push back through this cyber cage. Now shutting them off from every angle. There's a 50 50 with the Silva that's making it a real issue, though. 1v1 now. Teddy on the other side, Platinum on the other. 27 HP to their name, and Platinum, even so, comes out with the round. And man. You know, uh, we, we talked very briefly about how the last time these two teams matched up, the scoreline didn't show how close it was. And this is what we're talking about. These rounds coming down to one player walking away with 14 health in a long range encounter. You know, the, w one breath of a bullet and that goes SJ uh, to San Jose State. I mean, a lot of the rounds have been close, but that doesn't change the scoreline up at 5-0. and oh. there, There's a player I want to highlight that I didn't feel like highlighting in the last one because I felt like it was a bit rude, right? Maybe it's just uncomfortability on a specific agent. But between the battle of Nacy up against the opposing side's Viper player of Platinum on Icebox, it felt like Platinum had a much better grasp on that specific agent. And when we talk about strong players on the smokes here at CF1, Nacy's always a name thrown into the mix. The Brimstone and the Omen are almost unstoppable, but when it seems to come down to the Viper, to the Astra, to these quote-unquote new agents, it has been just a Platinum show all day. This round's not over. Hold up. I hear you laughing along. It was in a pretty good position, but SJSU thrifty through all off the back of a big push from their jet. I'm sorry, Dora. I just couldn't bear it. I just couldn't bear it. That's right. Yeah, I don't I say it, it twice. I'm proud it's of not it. funny. It's, it's not it. funnier because he said it twice, Steidl. Yeah, score multiplier. Let's go. <laughs> Super happy to see that player right there. I've been waiting for Bear to kind of explode out the kitchen with what they've been cooking. Finally getting a little bit of heat, getting a little bit of traction here. San Jose State looking a little bit more confident on that last round. And mo momentum's what they need. I have, a, I have a pretty strong feeling that we see San Jose State get a few rounds under their belt. And we're going to be looking at a completely different team when it comes down to confidence thing. Already showcasing Ooh. that with the run it back. Able to find two! Barely squeaks that second kill through, and now the dinner bell has been rung. San Jose State looks to hunt. After finding a kill in a trade, Teddy finds two. And that's going to be pretty much it. UCI only with Platinum left. Going to have to get a 4K to finish this one out. So no freedom to move, no information on where anybody is, except for uh, somewhere that way and somewhere this way. You know, one of the interesting things that I've noticed with Platinum, and I kind of theory crafted it earlier on when we got to see the the agent lock in, is they were running it alongside the own. I said, you know, does this mean they're running more of the more of the stuns, more of the gravity wells? And they've been using the gravity well a lot with Platinum, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure if it's done much of anything. Even in the rounds that they have won, it felt like it's mostly been the gunplay for them that's done it. And in that round in particular, I think they used two or three different gravity wells pushing onto that A site and. None of them really did much. It's, it, those are utility that I would kind of rather see be used as a smoke because all of a sudden, then it's not a problem that Thigwerb can turn around. All of a sudden, Thigwerb can't turn around into anything. He's walking back into a smoke in which you can use that aggression that you want to have a little bit more so, especially when you're running a composition that is severely lacking in the way of any flashes, any blinds. You need to make that space as best you can and cover it up. So I'd love to see a bit of a shift in play style in that regard. Well, we've talked about how well of a team UCI is when it comes down to the adaptation. Oh, with the aggression. San Jose State's favor. 
egg. Gonna have to completely evacuate that push. Tries to get a, li a little bit aggressive. Gets overzealous, if you will. Meets the entire UC Irvine team there on C Long. And now it's up to Bear and the rest of the team to hold off for the rotation from San Jose State University as they've not only pulled the attention, but it looks like UCI was like, okay, fine. You want to contest this here? Let's see. I do like these rotates out of SJSU, though. They're confident, right? It's not too much of a lean towards the one site that they're looking for. And neither is it from UCI. They've got a fairly good read on the situation. So as hectic as things were earlier, SJSU really do feel like this is a comfortable situation for them. And I mean, I think we both know that SJSU, when they're aggressive on Haven, right, that's the game they want to be playing. And they're forcing UCI into the uncomfortable place. Oh, Hunter's Fury there you to two corners, finds Bear in the back of C. What a shot, what a play, two left for San Jose State University. UCI are able to push on comfortably to the point, only one number left for San Jose State, approaching quietly C long. What a shot. I'm mad he was able to just send that. I mean, it was a good placement. I think he knew where he was placing it, but nevertheless, just, you know, throwing one towards mid and then just flicks one on to C, just happens to find the frag. That's got to be brutal for SJSU to take. And now UCI can start building back up that economy that's oh so strong for them. Not only their economy being strong, but look at the ultimates. I mean, they're going to have platinum back online here in, in three orbs. And then they've got... Uh, they've got the neural net alive for June, so any information they need, if they're going to decide to go ahead and take a slower push, going to have the upper hand there. And if they don't want to go the slower push, they've got the showstopper from Nacho to really force the entry. I'm looking at the pace of this round. You see, I've done a good job of varying things up. I think they understand who they're playing into, that they do need to be wary of the aggression coming out early. But are they ready for the operator? Nope. No shot. Bear finds one. One player to be waiting outside of garage here. They're letting UCI have it, which is honestly the right choice considering that you could have a Roomba and a paint shell coming at you, which is a pretty terrifying prospect, if you ask me. They just need to keep an eye on the back. And there's the Sova drone being utilized to do exactly that. Make sure they're not getting too much map control. But a quick push in off the back of Nacho. Make sure that nothing gets through. One shot with the showstopper doesn't connect onto anything. Traded back for another SJSU. Large and in charge of this round with Macy in the back of C. They see you in a big play and helping SJSU stay in the fight, but UCI now has point control. One down B long for SJSU. And one there in garage, but it's Bear with an op. Who's able to put things down to a one-person squad. We got the Platinum Bear. here in the back corner. Bear knows exactly where Platinum is. No questions about where that player was. You're absolutely right. Bear knew exactly where they were. And finally, that operator pays off. I think after three different rounds of buying it between the two maps. SJS, you are able to get a foothold off the back of some really big operator play. And Bear's a player that we know can play with it very well. Extremely rotate heavy here on Haven. We'll see him peek over towards A. You'll catch him on C at the end of the round. It's really mobile, and it could be what shuts UCI down, because UCI have been playing fairly flexible for the most part. And if you keep trying to poke and prod and explore these different parts of the map, eventually, you're going to poke the bear. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, eventually... Now, eventually, these two teams are going to go into a halftime, and I hope they have representatives watching the stream, because I did get to speak to Choi Boy on San Jose State for the matchup and asked for a prediction. And um, so far, not going the way Choi Boy predicted. Choi Boy thought they would be taking it in a 2-0 with pretty close score lines. But UCI right now leading the charge. They predicted that this goes to a 2-1. So I, I feel like UCI doing a little bit more, a little bit more better. Almost said that. I know a little exactly bit better. Where you are. Finding out these predictions with a neural net now for San Jose State. Spike planted. This is a dangerous bit of territory. 3v3. Going in first with the operator is remotely questionable. But it is traded back by Teddy. 2v2 at long range. Platinum has a lot of util to try and stop this. Concusses the first bit of the defuse. Sprays for the second. It's back to the same 1v1 we got earlier. Teddy v Platinum. Same HP for both of them. Platinum goes up 2-0 versus the Sova. And this is not the first time that we've seen Platinum being this anchored player. Using this Astra as a bit of a, a shot calling position. Not necessarily pushing at the same time as the group, but there to trigger that utility and then clean things up towards the end. 
7-3 as well. They've crossed over that threshold of what we would consider a good attacking half. We said this is like, if there was ever a half of Valorant that mattered here at CF1, this is it. And UCI have, have in my eyes, taken away a win. SJSU can try and pick themselves back up, go for a good second half, turn this into a close game, but things are looking a little bit dire here. The team that felt more confident coming into this match smokes all the way out on A, a quick push, you know, throwing back to Icebox with the level of control they're getting. The post plant positions should be 100% perfect for him as well. Coming out of this, the drone finds out a little bit of information. All five players lined up here for SJSU. And you know what? The post plants aren't all that good for the attacking side. Some shots landing on the silk. If SJSU push this quickly, they could win the round, but Silph's being a problem back behind him, taken down by Bear 4v4. Run back is still up for the Phoenix, so they've got a shot. Shot indeed, but June's got oh! aim and 3k easy! UCI able to put 8 onto the board now in good positioning from June and a bit of a rushed team from San Jose State leads to a big play and a highlight reel. You know when I was Looks talking about the, the gravity wells not exactly being the most useful out of Platinum thus far? Well, it may have been the first time we've gotten a highlight out of one, but by God, did it look sexy, Steidl. It did, and it can join that with the fact that you have so much information being gathered from UCI at that moment. Recon dart dart plus the camera plus the owl drone. It's just so easy for that Astra. So much support and information. To make plays like that. Oh, you a little camera dance, a little bit of camera dance. Wow, He's tried. There was a there's a handshake offered, and it was not taken by SJSU. Another Hunter's Fury coming out from Nibbler. This time, however, Bear going to be safe in their corner over on A. Betty still firing bullets through the cipher cage just in case they get themselves a little bit of purchase on the enemy team, but they've gotten the information. Most likely not a C push. As we haven't seen much there, B still been clear, so the rotation towards A in the middle of the map gonna get called out. Quick reaction here by the Phoenix to get over to that A site. They've tried playing the retake on A multiple times, and it hasn't quite worked out for him. Oh, Bear's in a miserable position right now. This is a fantastic smoke, though, to maintain the angle. Stamp on top of these boxes, gets one, dashes away, an aggressive oh. push by Nacho shut down immediately, and the rotations by SJSU hold strong. Maybe that retake isn't what they should be going for this time. Instead, holding map control towards the center of the map as well. This is fantastic. This is a perfect display of how to react to a quick push by UCI. We talked about how strong San Jose State can be on the defense, and you're seeing it now, how quickly they're reacting and spreading around the point in such a fashion that two players on C, two players on A, they can't comfortably push into B because they know that there are members in that C area. So you're going to go ahead and do one split so that they're protected. Trade comes through, but Thig's still alive. The 1v1 on point as the bomb does go down for Clint. No idea. Up over the top with the pistol. That was a little dirty, Thig. That was a little dirty. He gets some style points for it at the very least. Knows that spike's going down. And gets on top of it ASAP. 4-8. Not the worst half for SJSU, but I think we can both agree they were not in control of the pace of that half. And as the side swaps, there's a lot of pressure on this team to put up some numbers that we have not seen out of them before in a match that they have been caught off guard more than any other time. Do they have it in them is the question. They've got some good mid-round calls. They've got some good adaptability, but... This is a team that is very used to being in the driver's seat. And that has been oh. anything but the case in this match. This is rude. The Cloud9 Astra setup over here on A Long. The Gravity Well Plus, I believe that's a fake smoke. But whether it's a fake smoke or a real smoke, it doesn't really matter because SU is not going to know about that. But they're going to completely lose any, any ability to push over there. So thankfully, San Jose State looking to push elsewhere off the bat. Out Early pressure the here. From... There, they caught the one thing they wanted to. That trap wire was a bit of a problem. Platinum pushing in quickly. Gravity while trying to deny something, but everybody's flash. Nobody can see. It ends up in a one-man advantage here for UCI as they look to push back in on this retake. They've already got sight control. Oh, oh and yeah. one from the shock dart as well. <laughs> Nasi's kind of just there to see what, if anything they can walk away with, but UCI doing a very good job of quickly answering that pressure on B. 
And at 9-4, I mean, we, it's time we remind ourselves that UCI have won every single one of these pistol rounds. This is a team that thrives off having a strong economy. They're doing the exact same thing here. SJSU is toying with the idea of a force-up, and I'm all for it, man. At this point, it's about sending them something, giving them a gut check, get the Spectres on board, get the Sheriffs out. It's time to go to town, baby, and we shoot the kill. Let's see what they can get done over here at the A-side, because it's a, a pretty quick setup that they've got locked in for themselves. There's that Astra setup. Gonna spend a little bit of time. They can't get any information from the recon dart, and they can't comfortably push into this area. They have no idea how many number of ZCI are waiting over there. However, the Owl drone going to completely debug long. Push the team further in. Fig finds the opening kill, but trades out Platinum there to get that kill. Backing out now, waiting for the rest of the team to rotate through Silk, covering long just in case any members of San Jose State decide to push aggressively. Yeah, the side of the map. However, with the spike down, at UCI has a pretty good idea of where the plant is. Yeah, I mean, how many kills is Nibbler going to get through smoke before the end of this match? It's getting a little bit ridiculous. UCI as well made a really good call there. The second they saw the Spectres, they called the drop out. They wanted to play the retake here. They know they're at a bit of a weapons disadvantage. They know they've got a shot, though. Flying off from the high ground. Turns it into 2v2. Teddy, 1v1 up One against the rest. Silva v Silva. Shock darts in, connects on a nibbler, down to a low bit of HP. One shock dart to dissuade them from picking the angle, should be oh, spraying. No! The smoke drops, and Teddy finds the frag just in time to keep SJSU alive. Oh no, the smoke just barely dissipating at the wrong time. Unfortunate. I mean, there are oh. another, another half a second and that bomb is done. I don't think SJSU are complaining. Th this match gets dirty now. Both of these teams are in a spot where they can't really afford that much. And SJSU don't really have an option. But they just step on the gas pedal. Keep a look at their, their buy right now. With the cash that they have, they're not going to be able to afford full weapons in the next round. They just have to push the advantage while they have it. UCI have rounds. They've got the ability to give this up. They keep the list by. They've just got pistols going into this on the defensive side. It's probably a wash for SJSU, if we're being honest. But they're going to be carrying the economy later. <sighs> and with UCI down to two people, this is a dream scenario. You've got pretty good control. Weapons are in your favor. All you really have to do is plant. Play for the, play for the retake. And Joyboy is just going to be greedy. Walk through the hallway, find himself, put a few kills, and put SJSU up to a 6-9. This is their chance. They've gained momentum. Their economy now back into contention. But it really only takes one good round from UCI here to put a stop plug. Into that yeah, and it's exactly like we were talking about. SJSU, they want to build their economy to the best of their ability. So taking off that second round wind, they get to go for the force up and then maintain this into like a semi bonus. Focusing solely on the economy because they have effectively four rounds to play with. And they know that they're going to utilize this one to try and give themselves a nice little boost at the cost of being at a disadvantage for one round against UCI. So it's a, it's a little trade-off, but one that I think SJSU are confident making. Information going to be popping out from the boom bot, but... Oh no, gets a little bit too stuck in that corridor, doesn't get the right angle, so no real information given. Nacho finding a couple of shots, but no kills. It sees many members of San Jose State pushing onto the site. They're able to find the opening kill with the knives. Grabs themselves the free vandal. Oh, and that's a lot of Same information. Same retake. card guard. Oh! What a quick retake by UCI. Platinum from Heaven just honestly just put in work. The second the smoke dropped from it, SJs, you kind of ran out of utility to shut that angle down. And it became, well, from Heaven, it became hell for him. And I think they've been kind of used to UCI, you know, rotating later the a site but you see it was just kind of waiting in the wings so the second that recon dart comes out from nibbler and gives you the information that there's one back site uh by sewers there's two on that box on um, boxes in the middle of the site it gives you so much ability to be aggressive in the angles that you peek now up at double digits, UCI has kind of planned to end this way, right? SJSU understood the, the risk they were taking in last round in building their economy. They're coming in this one with full buy, playing relatively default. It'll probably be see through uh, through garage, but 
with a three-man lean over there already for UCI, that may not be the place they want to go. They need to get a whiff of this soon, right? Figure out, okay, maybe we see some Cypher Util over there. Maybe we see the Omen stuff used at the same time. Where did it come from? And maybe then they can piece together exactly how many players are on that side of the map, because it is really dangerous. Ooh, Teddy gonna go ahead and activate the Util here on B, the giveaway. They're positioning and the Hunter Fury is gonna be out. They won't be able to finish the kill with a gun, although realistically the Hunter's Fury probably would have finished the story there. Fair gets taken down, but not before taking out a lot of health and armor. For Sylph, now up to 51 health. You see I two members left. Nacho back in spawn, but Teddy's there in the lurk and ready and able. San Jose this was getting a very clean attack. This is getting pretty bad for UCI economically. SJSU have built up something that can really, really last. They've all got trust funds in their back pocket. And Nacho's been buying some pretty interesting stuff. I mean, we've seen two times out of them now. A judge being bought. Sheriff's up for the team. They're trying to force as many of these gun rounds as they can. But they're running out of rounds to throw down in order to do that, right? You've only got so many pistol rounds in you that you could just give away for free to SJSU. Because with the three points being the difference, this could change pace at any point in time. Let's see if UCI want to do anything to to the anterior of that. Maybe a push in mid? Absolutely is that going to be the answer. Three members up. Not quite getting spotted out here by Choi Boy. But a lot of pressure being applied right now. And SJSU, I'm not certain that they feel it. Not at all. SJSU are focused in on angles. Lose one in the back, but the information just doesn't get shared. The kills come through and UCI on a budget buy of a round. They're gonna put themselves up drastically at the body advantage. No chance. Well, it's not over yet. They barely managed to recover any of those weapons. One before, though. I'm not giving Thig we're particularly good odds into this one. They should have enough smokes as well if they just want to hold on top of that spike. Gravity Well is quite rude, to say the least. Thig we're being forced back yet again. Look at look at these stars all lined up. Oh, yeah, like picked up, right but there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just literally it's like a whole solar system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of time right now. Thig has got a lot of pressure on them to win this round because if UCI live, not to mention with four players, make that three. They'll left. get to take three weapons out of this round, which is just as dangerous. No four seconds left. If he's quick. Might be able to squeak out time for a plant. Only needs four seconds on the clock in order to do so. They'll get heard. That's, that yep, that's within audio seconds. range. Players coming in quickly. There, there's way too much. This spike's barely going to go down. The push on site is going to be complete. They're going to take... Oh, no! Not pushing through that. Wow. Shock dart being used. Blind... Oh, my lord. Poor thing. We're... Nice blind! Nice blind! Oh! So close! The Platinum was there with the shots. There just wasn't enough <laughs> HP in the bar. But a very close round for San Jose State. Two rounds left for UC Irvine. Platinum was the only one not looking in the direction of that curveball. That could have been really dangerous had they been, but played it smart UCI, used their numbers advantage, and I mean, remember, they didn't have much in the way of weapons going into that anyways, so they come out of this, they're still feeling fine, they had a buy off the back of that anyways. What that means is now Platinum gets 4.5k to play with in other rounds, maybe turn that into an operator for Nacho, question mark, if they want a real trump card to try and put that 13th away. They've got a lot of options in regard to that. But this round is going to be tough for SJSU. I think it's kind of the core of the point that we're getting to. When you're down util, when you're down by, you still have to put rounds up on the board. Come on, let's go. Now running back, Thig's going to be able to get a decent amount of information. Gives away some positioning with nothing going into the kill feed. They know the running back is now off the table. Nibbler going to go ahead and completely concede garage to SJSU. They're now being aggressive here on a B and needs to be careful. The Astra has been anchoring over here on B, making sure that nobody can come aggressively or routinely. Nacho finds Choi Boy with the Lurk, just kind of giving up space to no San Jose to State you. and allowing them to uh, kind of put themselves into a bad situation. <sighs> What a wonderful hold by UCI right now. Just playing the information game, playing so slow. Every trade is with a purpose. Good teleport as well. This should allow Sylph to regroup with the team. Just buy time. Just get some time for this raise to come back in. There it is. Nacho's trying to push in quick. Should be traded out by the Yoma, but no, Teddy's good for two. 
ultimate's up for the Astra. Shouldn't really matter for Platinum. Uses the gravity well to keep Teddy at bay. <laughs> but with Spike in hand, 30 seconds, there's time for a rotate here reasonably. Platinum's got to keep their head on swivel. This is the this is the third time we've seen these two go at it late in the round. Remember, it is Platinum up 2-0 in that regard. This would be a huge win for Teddy. Oh, no. Platinum is not checking the angle. Teddy sees the gun. Left. Oh, Platinum got a little bit anxious. Never able to find the shot upper hand for San Jose State now 8 to 11. This is gonna this is, I feel like this might be an overtime map here door. I, I got a, I got a feeling an itch. Be careful with your itches man. There's four ultimates up on the board here for UCI and we know how dangerous they are on some of these four spies and it looks like they kind of want to go for this one which I'm, I'm happy to see some specters bought up playing a little bit dirty. We haven't really seen that Astro Barrier used. To, to much effect for them quite yet. So I'm curious to see whether or not they put that one up to good use this round. But take a look at the stack actually from UCI as well. Two members playing out in a connector. One in garage, one over in C. This is something that we haven't really seen out of them yet. Oh, come on, Nibbler! Again? I was going to say, that's definitely something we've seen out of Nibbler. <laughs> Able to find, pinpoint, and execute member of San Jose State Spike University planted. just off the bat with that Hunter's Fury. Spike's going to go down. However, four members of UCI are going to be positioning themselves for the retake here. An unsurmountable, but definitely an uphill battle for San Jose State University. As Util gets spent, trades come through 2v4 now. The showstopper lands on deaf ears with the Spectre. Find itself some purchase and a kill. Both members of San Jose State left defending the bomb are down. 12 rounds up, only one left for UCI, and they're going to completely take the day here. They're not even going to see the third map. SJSU should have some gas left in the economic tank here, but in the way of ultimates, they're also relatively loaded, right? If there's a round where they can come away, it's here. If they can spam those ultimates away, come up with something. It's just so hard to match the efficiency that UCI are getting out of every single buy they go for. And taking a look at the buy over on the side of SJSU, it's not pretty. The one thing they've got going for them is that Bear can afford to, to use that Blade Storm and able to chuck a weapon over to somebody else, namely Nacy, who has very little in the way of armor. But it's piecemeal at best. Let's see if they can take down UCI in the round. It's penultimate this series, quite possibly. No more charges left. You see a lot of pressure from San Jose State at C Long. UCI is just going dipping. To go ahead and give, yeah, they're giving all the respect that is due to what has been expended onto the point. Knives, as well as the, the Phoenix utility, play for the retake allow for uh, you for san jose state to kind of make some mistakes on their own and then keep yeah. doing these wonderful push or retakes that you've done so far san jose is out of util right now they've used literally everything they've got a couple of cloud bursts left if they want to hold this but they're going to get shot at from every angle uci doesn't have anything to worry about when they go put this one back in platinum speaking free angles the hunter's fury is the last bastard of the defense kenny going for two holding strong on site is troy boy 1v1 now again Teddy, the same situation we've seen him in constantly trying to play time. Peaks early. One tap on the head. No, his playing time has the set shot guards, has the peak, and keeps SJSU alive. He had to check where the spike was. June tried to kind of walk back into the area, but had walked just outside of the bomb's circle, so had to check back to the left in order to position themselves to begin defusing. And that check brought their cursor off of the spot they needed. It's got to be a perfect set of rounds from SJSU if they want to hold on to this. They do have the buy. They've got the weaponry going their way. Nacy is going to be able to put something up on the board. UCI, uh, it feels like it's kind of that old adage of it's not the size of the buy. It's how you use it with them. The sheriffs have been really deadly, so no rounds are free here is I think the, the moral of the story. We see a push, though, come through C. Not going to find anything for UCI. They're playing a bit of a gamble in this round. And on the other side of the map, this Astra's just trying to buy time. Just trying to give them time to come all of these members onto the flank. The question is, how many is SJSU expecting? Also, oh, they'll know. Depends. Think we're pushed through. Yeah. Not we're only reinforcing this. Both Teddy and the and the Phoenix are both here to hold this. Ouch. I know exactly oh, where. Oh, Nibbler got a little bit too aggressive. Just be able to find that kick there thing. Good job of not only finding information, but gives it off to Choi Boy, hands it away so that somebody else can cover the angle. And helps over by the sewers. The members of UCI now pushing on to B in a bit of a 
reconstruction effort, but it's kind of an exit frag situation for UCI at this point in the game. If you're given the chance, which they will not be, then as they stay going to keep themselves in the game, putting it to 10 to 12, two more rounds pushes us into overtime. But if UCI can squeak one more out before that happens, they're going to close the door on San Jose State. That's a trick. They got two more rifle rounds before, I believe, yeah. No, one. This is their final rifle round. If they lose this, that's their economy down the drain, and then they get a force buy up on the final round. So UCI, this is like their last real chance to have an even shot at putting this one up to 13. Otherwise, we are very, very likely destined for an overtime. Players lined up. Normal split for them. No garage control kind of becoming the, the meta so far between these two teams with the Astra holding down in mid strong. We've got all the angles they could ever want. Drone pushed in, but not all that much information found for SJSU. They're going for it anyways. Bears in and bears down immediately. And that's a big pick for UCI. You've immediately taken a heavy hitter out of the ranks of SJSU. But trade there, but still leaves San Jose State down a man here on uh, here on C. Sierra Vine. Oh, Teddy now knows there's somebody on the contest. Being able to find the kill. Platinum with the follow. One member left from San Jose State goes down, and UC Irvine. Gonna be taking Haven, taking Icebox, and taking the night. Big win in the last round. 13 10 is, I, I think, the best that SJSU could have done Defenders there, though. Win. I mean, after the first half went so shaky, I told you that was the half that really decided we could go to the other, but it was kind of just gonna be more of the same no matter what it felt like. And UCI come out of the gate swinging. The icebox counter pick was huge. They carry the momentum into game number two. That's everything we were looking for. And I'm honestly not sure what you're looking for over there. I was trying to see where that came from. <laughs> um, that's what that's what I'm trying to do over here. You know, I spent all day doing research. You know, preparing. I got got my fancy notebook with all the fun little scribbles and and things I've got. But like, no reason for me to have that. A lot of things coming out of left field right now. A whole different side of UC Irvine coming out the gate here in split two. And, and honestly, looking at this map, I, I didn't feel like I saw the San Jose State University from split one. They looked a little bit um, disjointed in some spots. The executes weren't as clean as I've seen them previously. And, and the confidence on the retake, just it, it started to show up a little bit towards the end, but they were it's like they were steam engines. It just took them a little bit too long to heat up and, and granted, once you get he he heated up, you're good to go. But if it takes you this long to do it, this is the result that you're going to find. Yeah, I think there's kind of two things that played into the match, right? One was a seemingly bit of uncomfortability with the new new agents. And by new, I mean Astra and Viper. Viper's not new, but like, let's be real. Viper's relatively new when you're running her in this kind of context. And the fact that we saw a UCI who is willing to play them and willing to play them very well, especially that Viper out of Platinum. It was really impressive on Icebox. I want to see more of it. And I think that's what gives them a leg up, right? Not only were they able to counter strat, not only were they able to say, okay, we've looked at what we've done against SJSU in the past. How can we change that? We need to take hold of these games early. They did exactly that. They played the right agents. They're playing modern compositions and they're playing them well. The UCI is honestly just an incredible team right now. And I think it's going to be one of the most indomitable in the West if they can continue to have dominance over the new agents. Yeah, if you're in the Western region, look out because UCI is here to stay and they are here to take it all. And we're going to get a little bit of an insight into that UC Irvine team here in just a minute with an interview. So go ahead and grab yourselves another soda and a bowl of popcorn right back after the break.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the one, the only Platinum OG here for the interview from the team of UC Irvine Platinum. What a match. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Played a lot of Valorant. It's fun. <laughs> I'm glad you think that. Obviously, it shows in your play. And um, uh, before we get too in-depth into what we saw today, I kind of want to bring, I guess, a history check into the realm. Split one. You guys start off against SJSU, and unfortunate, you guys lose the 2-0, and scoreline looked a little bit heavy. Split two starts, and you guys come out of nowhere with this aggression on the San Jose State that caught them a bit off guard. What changed between split one and split two that allowed you guys to kind of bring that change of pace? I think the meta for split one, it was like, we didn't know how to play it that well because we didn't scrim. Um, but coming into today, it, we, we were still pugging it out. We had zero scrims, um, but we changed some roles around and it seemed to work out in our favor. And I think Nibbler's IGL is just actually insane. This guy plays too much ranked. It's, it's, it's just, he's just calling <laughs> off. He's just randomly calling stuff and it's just working. No, I, I gotta say, one of the key things that we noticed in the match was, one, you guys clearly had a distinct change of pace. Normally in this matchup, we see SJS, you take control of the match early. Instead, you guys were taking it to them on Icebox. It was just all out aggression everywhere up until the last two rounds when you guys ran a late round rotate and then a default, which was ironically the mix up in anything but a default. Uh, if that makes sense. But the other thing was you playing on Viper. It looked like you were so comfortable. And the, you know, the meta's kind of shifted. We Viper's always kind of been a bit of a staple on Icebox, but as she gets played more on other maps, as Astra falls into the meta, it feels like between the, the two teams, you guys really had a strong grasp of how those two agents in particular worked. Have you been labbing them particularly hard lately? Or what, what's the deal with that? Because you guys look indomitable with them. Um, We haven't really labbed anything. We just don't scrim. But I played Astra and Viper a couple times in ranked, um, and I felt like I had a pretty good grasp of like how to play it. And Astra is like it takes uh, a lot of strategizing, and I felt like I was able to uh, quickly come up with uh, things here and there, like smokes, fake smokes, like pulls and stun plays. And uh, yeah, I think it, overall we had a great understanding of like playing together and like playing off each other, and we won important rounds. Uh, my next question is a little bit of a personal one. Uh, I got together with uh, Choi Boy before the round, asked, you know, what kind of predictions you have, and Choi Boy said they were going to win a 2-0, and uh, they ended up losing a 2-0, so I wanted to give you a brief moment, and, and remember, remember, got to keep it family-friendly, but are there any words that you have for Choi Boy, Cho Choi Boy and the team of San Jose State University after, after the win? Um, I don't have much words. I just, I don't know. They're a good team. Uh, I respect them. Uh, but coming into this, we didn't even think we were going to win. Our whole team, we just wanted to have fun. Uh, we just tried our best, played what we wanted, and then just, it worked out. Now, big difference here. I think it's becoming abundantly clear that uh, that all the best Valorant players, uh, you, yourself included, use the same chair. I, I, it, It's uncanny between you and me and the Kosh title. I'm sorry. I, I hate to let you down here, but it's it's become abundantly clear which of the two of us are, are uh, superior in this regard. Has that helped you at all? Um, honestly, I think it might have, but because uh, I recently got this chair um, before, like a couple months ago, I just sat on a wooden chair and it just it just Ooh. always hurt. Like after like long hours of gaming, so I had to get a new chair, uh. and it's just it's honestly helped me. Hey, there you go, man. I got mine for Christmas. I'm feeling good. No back pain. I'm sure. I'm. You know what? You're gonna need. You're gonna need a chair like that with the way you're carrying yeah. this team. We gotta prevent that back pain <laughs> from coming in, man. So you know what? Well, before we let you go, we'll give you your soapbox to stand on. Shout out whoever you want. Mom, dad, players, coaches. Uh, you know, professors, whoever it might be, man. Go ahead. Uh, big shout out to my team, Nibbler and his calls. He's crazy. Plays too much. Might need to take a break. Um, but yeah, everyone came up clutch. They honestly played better than they've ever have today. Um, Nacho, Sylph, uh, and June. They're just all crazy. And yeah, big shout out to them. Honestly, I feel like they put up most of the most of the rounds for today. 
Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Platinum OG, give them a big round of applause in Twitch chat. You know, all the emos that you want. Take your congratulations from us back to your team, please. And thank you so much for uh, giving us a little bit of an insight into that UC Irvine team. No, thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. Take it easy, man. And you know what? We're not just leaving you there. We've got more Valorant action coming up next week, ladies and gentlemen. You aren't going to want to miss it. It starts Monday, I believe, at 8 p.m. EST. Oh, they put the graphic up so I get to read it. Yep, East Region, 8 p.m. EST. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. We've got plenty of wonderful CF1 coming up. That split two is just getting started. Yeah, that match next week is going to be Ryerson versus UW. As long as, as nothing gets shifted around, of course. You know, not completely set in stone, but hopefully we get to see those two teams play out. But that will do it for me and Door here at CF1. So please, as we close the door on this class, just remember a couple of things. Stay safe, don't be toxic, and have yourselves a wonderful evening.